Good morning, guys. It is actually not morning, kind of. It's uh, 1025 on Friday, November 22nd. And I already started my day. You know, my morning routine is the same, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Wake up. Sean goes to school. John goes to work. I make my... I have water, and then I have... Um, my green tea Hawaii and then I go in to do yoga so that's all done now I'm dressed I have to start my day um, because there's a couple of things going on today I figured I'd vlog it for you um, so I took out these pork ribs baby back ribs I might just do two of them they do look like they're quite a bit so baby back ribs I had done this um, Kroger pickup thing. This was the last one. Um, so I had ordered three of these. I think they were like $7 each. Baby back ribs. The simple, simply, simple truth. Um, nah, I don't know if I'll do all three or two, but I'm going to probably, uh, they're really frozen right now. So somehow I want to put them in the slow cooker with the barbecue sauce, and then I'm going to bake potatoes. So today, Matthew, I have Matthew at home. Um, I actually did a Kroger pickup yesterday, which I was talking about it in the vlog, but I was too late and the pickup time they wanted was like 9 p.m. And I'm like, okay, no. So I did the order, but I ordered it for today. So we're actually going to pick it up today. Um, and then we have to go to the CSA today. So that's what's going to be for dinner tonight. Barbecue baby back ribs in the slow cooker and, um, and baked potatoes. So I'm going to do that. And then I learned yesterday from one of you guys um thank you very much brambles cottage told me there are two types of persimmons so the ones that i was talking about the little ones that i like to eat firm are the fuyu ones and you're supposed to eat them firm and they actually are nasty when they get soft and i did notice that the parts that were getting soft weren't too pleasant tasting but then these are the ones i got from the CSA and has a slightly pointy tip. And the other, the uh, Fuyu ones, the ones that I was eating, which were smaller, had a flatter tip. You guys are amazing. Anyway, so these I noticed I had gotten from the CSA. You saw them in one of my CSA um, videos. And when I would eat it, it was freaking nasty. Holy crap. So two of them, I, I thought it was one, and then I tried another one, and it was just as bad. It had the weirdest texture. It was just gross, and I ended up throwing them out. I had gotten six from the CSA. So now I'm down to four. One, two, three, four. So good thing I didn't throw them out. So Bramble's Cottage said that these are called Hachia. Hachia ones and the Hachia ones are the ones that are meant to eat be eaten soft and that they are gross firm So I learned that the hard way. So this one got pretty soft. This one's really soft. So I actually <laughs> I actually took a little bitty piece of it. It's so good Oh my god Reminds me of mango. Tastes like mango. And when these are soft, these are the ones that you make the pudding out of, or the custard. So this one's soft. Those three are still a little bit firm. So I'm going to leave those to get softer because, like I said, they were gross. So thank you, Brambles Cottage, for educating me on persimmons. I'm so excited for next fall when they come out. I'm just going to go nuts with them. Um... But this is really, really good soft, you know? Like I said, it tastes like mango. So I'm eating this for breakfast. I have my second glass of water. I already had one, and then I had my green tea with the fiber in it. And then this is my second one. Um, and I'm not sure what I want to do with those bananas. I don't know if I want to freeze them or eat them this weekend. I'll think about it. I was thinking about making a protein smoothie with, I don't know, I'll think about it. But today I'm actually going to 
go through this. I want to take inventory of what's in this freezer here, throw out what's been there for too long and um, make ideas with what to do with the rest of it. Obviously, I put the meat in there yesterday. So that's that's what I'm actually going to do today. And then, like I said later, we're going to go to Kroger to do a pickup and CSA. So rainy, rainy day today, but I think it's starting to clear up, but it's probably really muddy out there. So need the rain boots today. So to speed up the process, I put these packages of the ribs in warm water. Um, so they're semi-thawed. I uh, took the plastic off. So I'm using only two packages. There is double layer in each package. So three would have been way too much food. Um, so then I'm going to season it with this Georgia Boys all-purpose barbecue rub. Trader Joe's used to have this coffee barbecue rub. I loved it. They don't sell it anymore. I used to put it on the steak and the ribs. And then I'm also going to put some adobo, which I have to use sparingly because I am running out. All right. Oh, where are my tongues? Right where I put the jars. All right, there, meow. All right. So, and obviously, oh, wow, yeah, see, they're, they're still frozen together. But I'm going to sear them in the stovetop portion. I'll just flip this over. The stovetop portion with a little avocado oil. Just want to sear them to give them some good flavor. In fact, let's get these in now because they're stuck together. Ooh! Ooh, that popped up into my forehead. Damn! Okay. Get this other one in. That happens to me all the time. You get that splatter of grease that hits you right in the forehead. Good thing it's not hitting me in the eye. Um, now let me just sprinkle some seasoning blend on the other side. I need more of that spice blend for both of them. And when they get that color, I'm just going to turn down the knob to slow no I'm gonna do high cook because it's already 1130 and we're leaving here about 1 30 in two hours um yeah so I need it to cook like I guess four to five hours I don't want to do it slow just in case it's still frozen inside so I'm gonna do high for four hours after that now I got them all seared and they separated now so now I got the four slabs in there and then I'm gonna pour my Trader Joe's organic barbecue sauce. I love so much. If it comes out, there it goes. And of course, these ribs produce a lot of oil. So, it's a heavy fat meal. I'm gonna probably put a little bit of water in here and get the rest of it out. Hold up. Okay, I put water in it and shook it up to get the rest of the sauce out. Nice. Smells good already. And then I'm gonna lower it. I'm gonna get it on, oops. High for four hours. And it should be done by then. And that'll be around the time we're going to be coming back from the CSA. So that works out perfectly. And then for the potatoes, I'm actually going to bake them in the Instapot um, when we get back. Because um, sometimes, you know, my oven is tricky. So, um, yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put them in the Instapot so that they're done quicker. They're pretty big potatoes. And I went through my freezer. I cleaned it out. I threw out some stuff that I knew I wasn't going to use, stuff that was there too long. And then I made a list of everything I have in this freezer. And then we have a refrigerator in the garage with a, the small, you know, top part freezer. Um, but I have my turkey in there. So 
then I can look through that list and see what meals I can make, um, what we need to use up and what is upcoming so that I can plan. I don't do this all the time, but I do try to do it mostly every week. Um, sometimes it's just a mental note in my head, but this time I'm actually writing it out. So, and then it's 12 o'clock and we leave in about an hour, an hour and a half to Kroger. So I had a few minutes before we're going to Kroger and the CSA and I finally cleaned up my office. So that big mess that was there was a broken printer that we finally got rid of and recycled. There was something else over here that got we got rid of as well. But these boxes are FabFitFun boxes and right now they're full of printed recipes and recipes I pulled from magazines. So eventually I want to go through that, but I made it nice and pretty. So um, that's what I do. And there's Mrs. Aloe. And then that pile is gone. Um, I figured out which books that I did not want to keep, so I boxed those up. Um, the only piles I have to go through are the ones up there, but those are, you know... A constant going through some notebooks I want to get rid of just see what's in them so that's the last of my pile and over here is the box of stuff I got some hair products and some of those books that I'm gonna to donate to the library um, and the hair products I'm gonna to send to my my niece but I wanted to save those boxes because Christmas is coming so you never know when you have to mail something so that's gonna be there at least until the end of December but otherwise, this was the area I was most concerned with and over there. And now it's nice and clean. So now we're going to go to the CSA. We're leaving. How I look? <laughs> anyway, we're at Kroger. We're at the yeah. pickup spot just waiting for our like, groceries. Me and Matt. And then after they pack it in the car, then we're going to the CSA. And she's going to have more persimmons for me. I asked her if she had anymore she said she'll get me some so yay I'm loving the persimmons here we are at the farm look at they have a campfire for people to hang out with on today but it's pretty nasty I don't think they're gonna get many look at the way they stack the wood how cool is that but yeah we're gonna get our get our stuff there's the barn oops I think I covered the microphone there's the barn let's go get our stuff so we're in the car getting ready to go, but I am getting a little sweaty and I am feeling it. So good thing with that fireplace, they would get doing s'mores. I didn't take the chocolate. I actually like the marshmallows and um, graham crackers. So me and Matthew are going to split that. So that should get my sugar up. And they also had the... Um, apple cider so I put a dash of cinnamon that should get my sugar back up but I don't like Hershey's chocolate so I didn't I didn't take the chocolate so yeah I'm bougie that way so we're gonna head home and um gonna start fin or finish dinner because I already started dinner so me and Matthew are back home here are my bags from Kroger pickup that's garbage that's my CSA stuff. Got some good stuff in there and more stuff from Kroger that I got to put away. And I have my crock pot on the counter where I usually film the CSA stuff. But the ribs, let me tell you, they are smelling delicious. As soon as you walk in, you smell them. So I'm going to actually flip them over, make sure everything is cooked well. But they're almost done. I think there's only like 30 minutes left. But yeah... I got ice cream because we're going into the weekend and the boys love their ice cream. So I tend to buy Briars. Someone had told me uh, Briars pretty much is one of the only ice creams where you can read all the ingredients, all natural ingredients, nothing crazy. Um, so when I do buy ice cream that's not organic or from Trader Joe's or anything like that. Um, I get Briars and they like the French vanilla. So I, this is getting soft. I got to put that away. But um, yeah, I got, I like this little service that they do. Here's some organic corn that I bought. Um, and then I got some DeSico pasta.
What else did I get? Oh, heavy whipping cream for Alfredo and all that other stuff. Um, yeah, so let me put this away. And I got more Simply Apple Apple Juice. That's the apple juice we like to get. I like getting that. It's almost like a cider. All right, so let me unload all of this stuff. Here are the things I bought from Kroger. <clears throat> These are the eggs. When I have to buy eggs in the store, these are the eggs I like buying. Um, when you get fresh eggs, because of the, the nature of pasture raised, of them eating bugs and, you know, basically what they're supposed to be eating out in nature, their yolks are more orangey colored as opposed to a pale yellow. And um, so when you buy fresh eggs from the farmer's market, which when I get them from the farm and everything like that, these yolks are like golden. It's amazing. But then when you buy them from the store, they're like a pale yellow. So obviously you could tell you're not getting as many nutrients as you would by buying fresh. So I noticed that this brand, Pasture Raised, is the only one I've seen so far. Not that I've tried all of them, but not many of them say Pasture Raised. A lot of them say Cage Free and Free Range. It has to say Pasture Raised. And so far, this one is the one that I noticed that the yolks are actually on the orange side. So I buy these. These tend to be five something or $6.599 um, or like $5.69 or whatever. Um, so almost $6, um, which is kind of the price of a dozen when you go to the farmer's market. But the farm that I was using that delivered, actually, they were $4. So that was good. But... Kroger just had these on sale for $4.99, so these are $5. I thought I bought two. I ended up buying three, which is fine because we definitely go through them. And next week, being that all the kids are off and it's Thanksgiving week, I don't want to go to the stores. But this Kroger pickup is so cool, um, especially for these kind of grocery items when you know exactly what you want. Um, so... I'm so glad that these were on sale. So I got these, and then I like my Simply, Simply Apple. Um, and one of the great things about Kroger is that you could use coupons, you know, um, but I didn't have any. Sometimes their circular has things on sale. Uh, I got to play with that more. This is only the second time I've done this. I needed peanut butter. I tend to like Peter Pan peanut butter. This is my favorite peanut butter, and I'm so glad they started doing natural. So, you know, high, no high fructose corn syrup. Um, obviously organic smashed peanuts are the best, but then the oil separates and I'm not a fan of that. I've tried it, but I stick to what I like, um, when I eat peanut butter and surprisingly the, everyone else in this house likes the crunchy. Um, and there's been times where I found natural, but I'm not finding it anymore. I don't know why I can't find crunchy and natural anymore. Um, and then because of the baking season coming up, I bought more yeast, um, especially doing all that David Rocco pizza dough. So I needed more yeast. So I got these two for my bread machine. I picked up a little Parmesan just to get me over the hump of next week um, in case we run low. And then I wanted some organic corn. I like organic corn. I'm, I'm the one that eats this the most. I eat it with hot dogs um, last time. I made hot dogs, but I made them for the boys because I was pretty disappointed that I didn't have any more corn. And then I bought one box of Kerrygold. Again, it kills me when I have to pay the price for this one. Um, but it's that's going to get me over to pass Thanksgiving so I don't have to go to the stores. <laughs> and then the kitty cats love these catnip temptations. Um, and then I just, I needed heavy cream for the Alfredos and all that other stuff and um, everything that I use heavy cream for. And then I got two more boxes of DeSico Penne because they're always good to have in the house. We love the DeSico Penne. So that was my little Kroger thingy thingy. Um, nothing special to post a separate video on. But yeah, these ribs are looking good. So I'm going to put this away and then I want to scrub the potatoes and get the potatoes ready to bake. Um, and I also have to pull out my PS PSA, my CSA stuff. Um, yeah, got some, eh, a lot of the regulars again, they were loaded with kale. So yeah. All right. So let me put that away. I just finished shooting the CSA number five video and I did it over there because 
I had the crock pot there. The cat was trying to get to it. There's some packages there. The garbage is there. So John's on his way home. He should be home in about 15 minutes. So I really want to clean this all up and get those potatoes going before he walks in because we have, he went to the Predators game last night. So I haven't seen him yesterday. And then he was at work all day today. So we need some catching up to do and talk about the next upcoming days. <laughs> That's what we do. So if you watch the CSA number five video, you'll see that the farm told me these are persimmons. So now I'm so confused. Bramble's Cottage, what are these then? So these are super soft with big, big, the whole thing is like seeds inside it. So they said that these were persimmons. And I told her, well, I was told there's only two kind of persimmons. And the ones they gave me were the... Hachia, I think I said it right, I don't remember. Um, and then the ones I buy in the store or the one I got from my neighbor from Korea, those are the Fuyu ones. So what are these? They gave them to us last year, but I don't remember them saying persimmons. Um, but they are sweet and they are good, but with very big seeds. So um I'm not sure how I'm going to store these or if I have to eat them now because they are really, really ripe. Um, and they got a tree. So sometimes when there's enough, they put them in the CSA share. Last year, they put them in the CSA share. This year, they didn't, but she held them, she held them for me. Um, she, put, she said she had six quarts of them. So I, I, she gave me a quart. No extra charge. Nice. Just the way I like it. Free is for me. Well, I kind of paid for the share, so it's not really free. I'm roasting some vegetables. So I still had a lot of carrots from last CSA. So I put ghee on the bottom of the pan and I have my oven preheated to 380 because it won't cooperate at 375. And here was some broccoli. There's some broccoli that was from one of the CSAs. I haven't used it up, so I'm gonna use it. And then some turnips. So, um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to put a little more ghee so it gets that buttery flavor. Um, and then when it's done, I'll drizzle it with honey and sprinkle some thyme. So let me get these roasting. Do that. And then over here, I'm going to do the potatoes in the Instapot. So... I Googled it because I've never done it before. I mean, these are pretty big potatoes. These are five mammoth rus russet potatoes. They're not going to fit like that. So I'm going to have to lay them down. They said to put them in with the rack. I'm going to put them in. Okay. Please let this work out. <laughs> And then it says put in a cup of water. So I'm gonna put in a cup of water. Close the lid. Set it to sealing. Oh, there you go. Wait a minute. That's always the hardest part. I'm gonna hit manual. And it said 12 minutes. But those are pretty big potatoes. So I'm gonna put, there has to be a faster way. Come on. I'm gonna do, instead of 12, I'll do an extra four, cause those are really, really big. And then it should just turn on. There you go. Okay. And then I checked on my ribs and I was gonna flip them and they're literally just falling right off the bone. So those are good. That's going, and then the carrots. And of course, I'm the only one that eats cooked carrots, so I'll just probably do like a veggie blend in the micro steamer for the rest of the clan. I was hungry, so I'm making a pre-dinner salad just to 
get the edge off, get the hangry out of him. So I have Toscano cheese. That's the Toscano cheese I got from Trader Joe's. And then that's the red leaf lettuce that I just got from the CSA and some cherry tomatoes. And then I'm making some vinaigrette. I put some olive oil in here and a blob of Dijon mustard. I started that before I was going to... I'm going to put some balsamic. Ooh. That's the last of my balsamic. I'm going to have to add that to the list. And I'm going to shake it, shake it, shake it. Balsamic's sweet enough. I don't think it needs honey or anything like that. But that's it. Carrots are ready. They're tender enough. Kind of, yeah. So I'm going to remove them, but the turnips are not. Those obviously require a lot longer. So I'm going to take the broccoli off and the carrots off, and I'm going to put the turnips back in. But we're pretty much ready for dinner, so these will be for something else another day. So I'm going to drizzle some honey, and that's local honey that I got from the farmer's market. And the fall honey is the best honey because they spent all summer collecting all the nectar and pollen. Pollen, not nectar, pollen. So just a little drizzle, not much at all. Mm, delicious. And then this is time for my garden. Just gonna sprinkle a little bit on. That's it. A little more. Yeah. Those leaves are so little. So that's ready. I'm micro-steaming some peas and veggie blend for um, the boys because they won't eat carrots. Um, and then I'll check on the potatoes. So checking on these potatoes. Yep, look at that. The fork is going right through. Let me check on the bottom ones. Nice. Nice! That worked! Didn't have to sit in the ov an oven for over an hour. Thank God. Yeah. So the potatoes are done. The pork is done. Let some of that steam out. Carrots are done with the broccoli and just waiting on the veggie blend. So let's set the table. It's done already. There it is. The, the potatoes were so big I cut them in half and then in half again. So we all have half of a potato. There's the ribs, I have the carrots and one thing of broccoli. John's also eating the carrots and broccoli. And Matthew and Sean are eating the veggie blend. Yum, yum, dinner tonight. <laughs> Dina. Saturday morning, guys. And my sugar was low. It's been going low a lot in the mornings, um, so. Uh, I had to drink some juice to get it up. I think I might have to adjust my insulins. Um, I'm wondering if the fiber, which is possible, um, is keeping it at bay, so it's keeping it on the lower side, which is good, but I do have to adjust my insulins. Um, just unloading the dishwasher, and John had to go meet someone for coffee, and Matthew went off to work. Michael and Sean are still sleeping. Right now it's just me and Athena just chilling, um, drinking my water, which is somewhere. And there's Celine drinking her water. And then I'm going to do my green tea. And I think I'm going to do yoga today. I usually don't you do yoga on Saturdays, but right now nothing's going on. So I'm going to do yoga. I have laundry to do. And um, so not much today, but I did promise Matthew I was going to make an apple dump cake today. So we'll be doing that today. Hi guys, so I did yoga, I showered, almost finished with my Kona Mocha Green Tea Hawaii with fiber in it. Um, here's my sourdough starter. Um, I don't know if it's doing well. Interesting. But I've been trying to get into sourdough. Sourdough is supposed to be 
much more beneficial to you than any kind of bread that's out there, no matter what it's made out of, because sourdough is natural wild yeast from the air and not um, manufactured, you know, by a lab somewhere or processing plant. And it's literally the yeast in your your environment and it starts to ferment and break down flour and um, that's pretty much the basis of probiotics so when you make bread with that and any products with that um, you're getting the benefits of that fermentation which is excellent for gut health so sourdough bread is the best bread they say to eat because of that process in turn when you wanna make sourdough bread, it's not anything that you can make in the same day. You actually have to start it the night before. It's like a, a whole day process. So it's a something you have to plan for. And I have been learning more about it. I follow Farmhouse on Boone with Lisa, and that's where I got started uh, learning and, and researching on sourdough. And she has tons of sourdough recipes, which I'll link below. Um, her site, her, her website, and her YouTube channel, she is excellent. Um, it is a process because just like a plant, you have to take care of it. It's actual living organisms, which is insane. Um, I've had mine in the refrigerator, but I took it out because I do want to learn how to make a sourdough loaf of bread just like the one they gave us at the farm, the CSA the other time, one of my shares, which was absolutely delicious. Um, the only thing I've made with sourdough so far, I've made sourdough waffles um, and I've made sourdough English muffins, um, which are all on Farmhouse on Boone's uh, website. And I've made um, the her sourdough pancakes and she also made these sourdough skillet dishes, almost like a pot pie. Um, using sourdough as the top crust. And I've made her sourdough flatbreads, um, which we've loved, and I've made different variations of it. Um, so I will show you those in you know future videos when I do that. But I do want to try a bread. So I, I'm gonna, I have to feed this. Um, and then um, tonight, set up the bread so that it sits overnight and then tomorrow I'll be able to make the bread. So planning on the bread. I actually took it out yesterday because I was going to do it for today and I didn't. Um, me and John started watching Donnie Brasco and it's so funny how many times they say forget about it in the movie. I mean, you could do a drinking game, how many times they say forget about it and you take a drink. So it was pretty cool watching Donnie Brasco. We haven't watched it in such a long time, but see where I'm at with the blood sugar. Nice. So there's John's Jack, his whiskey. So I need to do laundry. And like I said, tonight I'm going to set up that sourdough loaf of bread. And I'm also going to make an apple dump cake for Matthew and Sean. They're the only ones that like apple. So I'm not really picky about my laundry detergent. Um, I do do I do use OxyClean, but I started buying um, whatever's on sale, the pods. Um, I always use the pods, and then this is OxyClean that's in pods, which I found on Grove Collaborative, their website. Um, I use the pods because as soon as the boys were tall enough to reach the bottom of the top loader, um, washing machine so that they can reach the bottom, I taught them how to do their own laundry. So that was about age 11 that they were able to reach the bottom. So all my boys since the age of 11 do their own laundry. You know what? Boys are boys. They don't care what their clothes look like. They don't have a lot of white clothes. So they just throw it all in. I said, just wash on cold, throw one of these, throw one of these. The only thing that we don't have is fabric softener um, in pods. I did have those, what is it, scent boosters, but that's not fabric softener. So I noticed like the towels were not getting as soft as they used to be. So I use Method, which I also get from Grove Collaborative since I have a shipment coming in, um, or I get it at Publix. So I use Method for fabric softener. And now that they're older, Sean's 13, the twins are going to be 20 next month, um, they're not going to be as messy pouring in the fabric softener anymore. So that is okay. But they still like the pods. It's just so easy. So like I said, they do their own laundry. Um, very, very good kids. 
So feeding SIDS, you basically, you're supposed to remove some of it, but I, since I'm going to be baking some stuff with him, I want a lot of him. And I call it him because um, sourdough starter, Michael named it SIDS. <laughs> so he got a name too. We name everything in this house. So this is SIDS. So when I make English muffins, I say SIDS English muffins. So it's pretty much equal parts flour and water, um, warm water. So I put some warm water and then you just stir them in. And then he gets uh, bubbly, gets bu very bubbly. Um, so that means you know that it is doing well and sometimes he puffs up and rises. So he's a little loose. I might actually need to put more flour. Um, spoon so my first attempt actually I think my first two attempts uh, it didn't do it didn't do too well and then I had to google um, as many ideas as possible other people to see their ideas and it's like a seven-day process so I'll try to link some videos uh, or the video that I actually used. It was like two English guys um, to get the sourdough starter. Actually, I think I made him a little too thin. Um, come on. Come on, Sids. Eat up. So, yeah, I'm going to use him tonight. I do want to make some waffles. A lot of times when I make the waffles, I make a whole bunch of waffles and then they go in the refrigerator so that, you know, grab and go or toast up and go for those mornings for breakfast and stuff like that. So I do want to make the bread tomorrow, but maybe I'll make some waffles tomorrow morning for them with Sid's because now there's quite a bit of him. Um, so I'm going to use up a lot of him between tonight and tomorrow. But yeah, that's my sourdough starter. And I use einkorn, again, low in gluten, higher in protein. So um, I use that. And I've had him about a year. Yeah, about a year. No, yeah, a little more than a year. I started him like last fall, around September. So yeah, he's been with us for a while. And they say the, the uh, some people have them for years, like six, seven years, and they actually pass it down to their you know children. When they get married, they give them a little bit of the starter to get their own start going. Pretty interesting, interesting history on the concept of sourdough uh, bread making. So that's pretty cool. Um, but not much is going on today. It's another rainy day here in Tennessee. Um, a little on the warm side outside. I think it's going up to 61. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm just doing laundry and just prepping for Thanksgiving. Um, that'll be a separate video and yeah, just what other stuff to organize. Maybe I'll organize a, at least a shelf in my pantry today. I don't know if you can see that, but he's already getting bubbly. So that's a good sign. So tonight's dinner is going to be David Rocco's pizza dough. We're making pizza. John and Sean won't be here for dinner, so it's just me, Michael, and Matthew. So I'm going to make pizza, and then, of course, there'll be leftovers, and if they get nashi at another time, they can have that. Yep, that's dinner tonight. So my pizza dough is done. Look how much that puffed up. So now I'm going to separate it into two, put them in bowls, and put a dishcloth over it and let it rise the rest of the day until I'm ready to make the pizza. So, ooh. There are the two, <laughs> there are the two pizzas doing their second rise. I put some food in the microwave for lunch. Ooh, got six hours left for the sensor. 74. So I am eating some leftovers from last night, the ribs and baked potato. So I gotta take that out. And then after I eat lunch, I'm gonna start on the dump cake. So I'm making the dump cake recipe. Um, 
John's uncle, Uncle George, used to live with us for a few years, and this was his basically go-to dish for every family event that we ever had. He would bring the dump cake, and um, he did different flavors. He would do blueberry, he did apple, he did cherry. I think cherry was the classic. Um, and then he kind of told me what's in it. I think he learned it, was it from my mother-in-law? I'm not sure, but he was always making it. And then I did find a recipe in a magazine, so I pulled that out, and I do have it. I think it was called Dolly Parton's Dump Cake. You basically just dump things in a dish and bake it. Um, no mixing whatsoever. Um, and then I did watch Pioneer Woman, and she made dump cakes as well. Um, and then I also saw that she had uh, even more flavor combinations, which is pretty interesting. But John and Matthew love apple pie, so they're the apple um, guys in the house. Me, Michael, and Sean are not too crazy about it, so basically this dish is for them. So I'm making it, um, and you need a can of apple pie filling, and then a can of crushed, oops, sorry, it's upside down, crushed pineapples, and literally you just dump them in a grease dish. Oh, wow, this isn't coming out. Okay, I'm going to need a spoon for that. Let me dump this one. There you go. That one dumps. Let me scoop out the apple. So this is now, it's two cans of the apple pie filling and one can of, I believe it's 20 ounces, of the crushed pineapple. But I'm going to post a recipe below. And I'm going to add a little so it gets more of that, oh, wrong side, more of that apple pie flavor. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon. Now, I don't remember why, but I heard Ceylon cinnamon is much better than regular cinnamon, which is cassia cinnamon. So they say when you buy cinnamon, make sure it's Ceylon. So I'm going to put some cinnamon. And then what you do is you dump a box of the yellow cake mix. Um, you do not make the mix. You actually just pour the powder all over the top. I need two hands for that. And what happens is that the, the juice from the pineapple, the crushed pineapple, will help cook and bake the cake. Um, so it's, it's the moisturizer for the cake mix. Um, so let me do that. So now I poured the cake mix on top. And I kind of mix it a little bit, get some in there. Probably should have used a bigger dish. Oh my God, I haven't made this in a while. And like I said, Uncle George used to make it. And uh, every, every gathering, it's like, oh, Uncle George made the dump cake again. But you know what? We all loved it. I loved the blueberry one. He made a blueberry one. So it was a can of blueberry pie filling. Um, and I like the cherry one too, but the blueberry one was really good. And you could probably, with the blueberry one, use um, an angel food cake mix for the top. Okay. So that's that. And then I'm going to slice up the butter into pats of butter. And then you dollop the top with butter slices. Okay. So that was one stick of butter. I ended up slicing another one up. So... Maybe like a stick and a half. And just dollop it. This is a, I'm not a great baker, so this is a really, <laughs> no, I'm not. He agrees. Um, but when we were building our house and it was around Christmas time, you didn't bake it. we, yes, I did. No, no, well, well, no, no, I'm saying you didn't bake the house. <laughs> No, I didn't bake the house, but we brought over to the developer. We made one. I made one, and we brought it over for Christmas, and he loved it. Yeah, that. So I definitely want to do a blueberry with angel food cake one. And another one that would be really good is the cherry, and then you put almonds in the – you mix it with – or you top it with some almonds. Um, Uncle George would put uh, walnuts, 
but because um, this is more for Matthew, if it was for just for John or other people, I would put walnuts, but Matthew's not crazy, just like me, not crazy about nuts in the baked dishes, so I'm not putting nuts on it, but you can top it with some walnuts. Um, the cherry one would be really good with uh, almonds. And then you put it in a 350 oven. Mine's at 355. Because that's how mine works. Oh, I need two hands. Matt. Matthew, please put that in. There you go. And it goes. And then the butter's going to melt into the... Um, cake mix and then the pineapple juice from underneath is going to mix with the cake mix and it makes a nice cakey fruity combination so easy peasy that's pretty much all the baking i could do <laughs> so unfortunately as you can hear the fire alarm got set off because the oven went on fire because You're because the dump cake spilled over so if you're making this at home, definitely put a tray underneath. It actually went on fire and Matthew had to throw water on it. And now we just got- You didn't know what to do, so I said, open it. it. <laughs> so- I Took this cup and just- yeah. He threw water on it and got the fire out. And so now the air is full of smoke. We have all the windows open and we're waiting for this alarm to stop. But it's good to know that it actually works. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll take the dumb cake out. It actually looks good. So don't set your cake on fire. Just bake it until it's golden. Um, but that actually might have came out well, but I should still put it on a tray. It might have a little smoky flavor, but whatever. Yeah, a little char, char flavor. Got all the kitty spiders on the floor. All right. So now the smoke is gone. House is cleared up. Matthew's going to try it. I mean, it's not burnt. Yeah, it's fine. It is fine. Yeah. Yay! No smoking itself, thank God. No charcoal. <laughs> but I do have to clean that mess up now. Great. So I'm cleaning it with baking soda and my Young Living Thieves all-purpose cleaner. This is how not good of a baker she is. Yeah, this is why I don't bake. Mom doesn't bake. And before I get started, I'm gonna need a drink. I'm gonna get some water. My cherry limeade. What a day. What? But at least the cake came out good. It came out good. So yeah, dump cake is great. And just few ingredients. Keep in your pantry for when you have company. Don't set the house on fire. Your cake will probably be better than mine, but that's why I don't do dessert. Yep, that's as clean as I'm gonna get it. I scraped it, I scrubbed it several times. Now I gotta make pizza, <laughs> go figure. In they go. Oh, okay. Thank God it's not on fire. <laughs> so the pizzas are done. And I didn't burn the house down. Yay. Take a slice. It's just me and Matt right now. Michael should be home from work soon. And I'm having a salad. And that is dinner tonight. Oh, let me see what my blood is. Oops. Two more hours left. 123. Not bad.